From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Hello. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. If they have a good personality and they're not great looking, then who cares? Well, let's just say hypothetically, okay, what if they have a good personality? (laughs) There are no no girls girls with good personalities. Good personality consists of a chick with a little hard body who will satisfy all sexual demands without being too slutty about things and who will essentially keep her dumb mouth shut. The only girls with good personalities who are smart or maybe funny or halfway intelligent or talented, though God knows what the that means, are ugly chicks. Absolutely. And this is because they have to make up for how unattractive they are. <laughs> it's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor this is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. Right here. Many of you are new to the class. Many of you slip up. Many of you fall off the Lycus 101 wagon. So for those of you, every now and then, we like to clean up uh, your impression of what we're all about, why we're here, and we like to uh, brush you up on some of the basics. First and foremost, this is not a marriage encounter course. This is not a marriage counseling course. Uh, We are not here to help you strengthen a marriage, strengthen a relationship. Hell, I've been divorced four goddamn times. Why would you call me for marital advice? Don't do it. If you want to learn how to have a successful marriage, why don't you go see Dr. Turkey Neck? How many times has she been married? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Go ask her. But don't ask me. The purpose of this class is to teach men how to get laid. Economically. Efficiently. Wasting absolutely no time, money, or energy on chicks who don't put out. That's our goal here in this classroom. Men want the shortest distance between two points. That's the way it is. Our own associate producer, Dean J. D'Amelio, now he may be moving to West Hollywood. <laughs> but that's because he knows that gay men want exactly what straight men want. They want the shortest distance between two points. <laughs> Just like straight men, as Dean will find out when he moves to his... His new digs in the 90069. I'm ready to rock. Uh, he will find out that gay men want just what we want. They want to get right down to brass tacks. And if you're Italian, all the better. <laughs> Bottom line. That is uh, that is the purpose. And, and, and uh, may I say, uh, we, we have no interest in getting to know you or getting to know, uh, uh, your politics or getting to know, uh, your opinions about things. If we're sitting there listening to you, it's just, we're putting on an act. We're not actually listening. 
in our minds when you're sitting there. And my last boss, he was such a jerk, just like my current boss is a jerk, you know. But my last boss was a jerk, and I had to quit that job, and I was out of work for about three months. And then I got this new job, and I went there, and it was pretty good for the first few. And all we're hearing is blah, 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 blah. We don't hear a word you're saying. We don't care. We're sitting there putting in our time, hoping to get laid. That's it. That's why we're listening to you. We don't care. We're sitting there with our x-ray vision, imagining what your breasts look like. We're imagining how far you might live from the bar or restaurant where we're listening to you. We are trying to figure out whether you're going to give us a peck on the cheek or you're going to jump from a moving car. <laughs> that That's it. You don't think we care about that stuff, do you, ladies? We don't. Jesus Christ. By the way, like his 101 students, it's, it's $40, no more on a date. That is the max. 40 bucks, baby. 40 now, I received an email, and, and Likus 101 is taking the world by storm. And if you don't believe me, here's an email from London. We have a Likus 101 student in London, England, and he wrote to me, and I'm going to read you his letter. Clean it up a bit, of course. But here's the letter from London, England. Uh, this is a listener named Mike. Mike writes in and says, Tom, I just followed the playbook to the letter. And BTB'd with less money and effort expended than I've ever done before and with a hotter girl. And then he said, the B in BTB is for boned. Obviously, he says. Mike says, here's how I did it. First, I asked out a hot girl who I had been very briefly introduced to. No big buildup. I just called her and said... What are you doing tonight after dinner? We've told you to do that. She put me off for a couple of days before we met. After she'd eaten, of course. Mike says, a bit of background here. Since I know you don't rate English chicks, and rightly so most of the time, this one is 5'5", five, five, blonde. She was a model when she was a teenager and has never weighed more than 95 pounds. That 95 pounds includes the breast implants. Very nice, he says. 31 years old, mind you, so obviously not a 10 anymore, but still a solid 8. See, this man's been studying. He says, I took her to a restaurant with a bar. It's a cool place. It's USP. What's a USP? Doesn't say. It's USP is that it's connected to a wine shop, and they sell wine at shop retail price. That's like Cobras and Matadors, by the way. You're in L.A. We met one of the uh, partners in Cobras of Matadors the other day, Maynard James Keenan of Tool. He was in here to do our wine show the other night. Did you know he's a partner in Cobras of Matadors? Mm. Mm. Mike says this was a cool venue, moderate prices. He says, I'm following 101 to the letter here. She turns up and says she's too hungover to drink, which immediately kills my simple plan to get her drunk and shag her. Whatever, I don't give up. After about an hour of listening to her telling me about her life and saying nothing she could use against me later to avoid having sex, I made my move. I leaned across the table, put my hand on her leg, looked her in the eye, smiled and said, let's go back to your flat and F right now. And he didn't say F. She got a bit pissed off and moody, so I said, that's fine. I'll get the bill, and you can go home on your own. My time has value, and I'm wasting it here. <laughs> this is one of my sons, all right. He says, I thought I might have gone a bit too far with that last line, but I kept my mouth shut. No way was I going to apologize or back down. I was reaching for my coat, and then she just crumpled. She said she wanted to stay and that she wasn't feeling good that night, but she really liked me, and things would happen on another night. I thought it was probably a filibuster, but decided to let her stay and see how it ended. 
During the date, I drank two bottles of Puy Fumé, the Guy Saget 2006 Sauvignon Blanc, at about 15 pounds, or $30 a bottle, while she sucked back four Diet Cokes. As you get two bottles of Puy Fumé, wow. That's a lot of wine. That's a liter and a half. As you can imagine, he says, with that much wine inside me, I was not acting respectfully. Whatever she wanted to talk about, I kept bringing the conversation back to sex. I didn't want her losing focus. She got into it, and I thought I'd brought her around. But in the end, she skipped out with a kiss. Bitch. At least we hadn't eaten. I had a good grab at her uh, boobs, and he didn't say boobs, he used the T word, and ass on her way out, though. Just a reminder, I meant business. She paid half the bill, even though I'd done all the drinking. My half of the bill was 20 pounds. That's dead on $40. Like I said, I'm following the rules here. Did I call her afterwards? Did I hell? Then he quotes the line from uh, Swingers that we, we used the excerpt on the air. He said, I had that quote, two days is like industry standard, so when are you going to call your baby six days plague in my head? Two days after the date, I got an email from her saying, am I forgiven? Forgiven for not shagging me on demand an hour after she met me? I guess I can forgive that. So long as it never happens again. A couple of days later, having not spoken to her in the meantime, I called her at 10 p.m. and asked her what she was doing. Turned out she was home. So I went round to her flat and did her on the sofa. Did I stay the night? Of course not. I'm thinking, towel off Big Jim and the Twins and get home in time for Sports Center on ESPN. Even though we don't get ESPN over here. I'm another satisfied customer, says Mike, and your biggest fan in England. He said, I hope you can use some of this on the show, but even if you can't, big thanks to you, Tom. You've changed my life. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's Mike in London, England. It works in London. It works here. If you've got questions for your professor, you can call 1-800-5800-TOM. If you disagree with what your professor has to offer, you can call 1-800-5800-866. And if you live in London, England, or anywhere around the world, we have an international phone number so you can participate in our class. The country code is 1. The area code is 323, and the telephone number is 520-6211. Now, I'll give you that whole package again. It's 1-323-520-6211, and you're guaranteed if you dial now, before I finish this sentence, I guarantee you will get in. But it's like it's 101, and time now for our students to take the floor. <laughs> Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sometimes I make a date to go out with them, and I do your rule. I say to them, what time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back, and I say, look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Likas 101. I am your professor, Veronica, on the Tom Likas Show. Yes? Is this Tom Likas? Did you want to talk to Tom? Yes, I did. All right, hold on, please. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Veronica, the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Yes. Hi, this is Veronica. Yes, I just said that. Oh, okay. Hello? Yes. Um, is it okay to talk to you right now? Well, you can talk to me whenever you like. Okay. Tell you what, let's wait five seconds. Okay. 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 Now you can talk to me. Okay. I've been wanting to talk to you forever because 
for me, I don't agree with some of the things that you say in regards to maybe I take them personally. I don't know. But I personally don't think that there's anything wrong with if a man takes a woman out to dinner, you know, um, and spends a few dollars on her, you know, in regards to having sex. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, that's because you're the beneficiary of it. <laughs> of course, you don't see anything wrong with it. I wouldn't see anything wrong with somebody giving me a Rolls Royce. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if it's a mutual agreement, I mean, because, I mean, women know as well, too, if they want to lay somebody, too. That's, know, that's exactly right. And having a nice dinner, having a nice dinner, maybe a glass of wine, you pretty much can fill out if you want to put out by the end of the night. Yeah, but you know what? If a woman really wants to have sex with you, it doesn't matter how much dinner you buy her or don't buy her. She's going she's gonna, to uh, ride you like a pony anyway. <laughs> you see, the only ones you have to buy dinner for are the ones that are not that into you in the first place. Hmm. Because when a woman's really into you, she comes to your place, she takes off her panties, and she gets to business. Hmm. Well, the way it got started with me and my dude, and we are still together, is um, we ate. We ate first. Right, but... Then but, we had sex. Where, yeah, but would you have had sex with him if he didn't buy you dinner? Yeah. That's my point. He didn't yes, have to buy you dinner. Well, actually, I bought him dinner. Well, there you go. I bought him dinner. The That's all you see. I you're making my point dinner. for me. A man should not buy dinner for a woman. Because if a woman wants to have sex with us, she'll have sex with us. And, in fact, she'll even buy dinner. <laughs> so the only ones who have to buy you dinner are the ones that you're not sold on in the first place. Well, I must agree that at first I had I really, really, really horrible thoughts about you. Even though I still listen to you and every time my boyfriend puts you on, I was like, well, I, have, I want to talk to him because I don't agree with that. But see, you really, you know, but you really do agree with me, don't you? Well, I'm just the type of person. If I want to get laid, I'm gonna let a person know. That's my point. Sex, and if I want to get with somebody, I'm gonna let them know. That's right. You so, know? so spending money to buy yeah, you dinner is a complete yeah. waste of time. Okay, but to me, no. I mean, we have fun when we go eat. We but have a good time. Maybe right? you do, time. but he didn't have to spend a penny. No, he didn't have to. And that's my point. Just, and neither does any man out to. there. Huh? And then neither does any man out there. If you want to find out if a woman wants to have sex with you, try uh, having sex with her without having dinner with her and see if she'll uh, have sex with you. And then what? Then go out to eat afterwards? Well, uh, <laughs> put it this way. Send her home, then go out to eat. You really do not like women, do you? I love women, as long as uh, their breasts are in my face. I mean, so you will never... Okay, here's my thing. Have you yourself went and had dinner with somebody, and then, you know, through that dinner, you're like, I really don't want to have sex with her anyway. She really is quite boring, or I'm really not attracted to this person. I really, really, you well, know. first of all, I try to avoid dinner at all costs unless she's paying. <laughs> I've got better things to do, okay? <laughs> oh, good. Okay, but you do. If she's paying... I have had women buy me dinner, and then I have sat there and said, now I see why she's buying me dinner. I can't stand this. <laughs> and then, you know what I do? Uh, this is one of the greatest tricks, and you guys got to learn this. If you've got a BlackBerry, and this may work on other phones, but I've got a BlackBerry, and I'm going to be honest with you. Uh-huh. Here's how I use my BlackBerry. And, boys, if you're looking for the latest Like It's 101 lesson, this is very useful information. The BlackBerry, now I have the BlackBerry World Edition, but most people have like the BlackBerry Curve, one of the other Blackberries, but they all have this feature. They all have an alarm on them, like an alarm to remind you to get up or take your pill or whatever it is you're supposed to do. What I do is I set the alarm and I put, instead of an alarm on it, you can, you can pick any sound effect that's on the phone. So I picked a telephone ringing. And I set it for 15 minutes from now. Mm -hmm. And if I know that I'm going down and I can't take it anymore, I set the alarm to go off 15 minutes from now with the sound of a telephone. <laughs> then I pick up the phone and it's like, oh, my God, I'll be right over. And I get the hell out of there. This phone is, is beautiful for that. 
So what, you actually pretend like somebody's calling you and you have to leave? Well, uh, either I get up and just leave them there to to fend for themselves. Uh, But if I'm not looking to be a complete a-hole, just a partial a-hole, I will have the telephone ring like a telephone. And anybody who's got a BlackBerry, try this out tonight just for fun. Go to the alarm, and it gives you any choice of alarms on the phone. Pick one of the ones that's actually a ringtone. If I don't want to lay with somebody, I'm going to tell them I ain't interested in you. Well, uh, you know. I won't even, that probably wouldn't even go all the way. Yeah, but you know what? When you tell that to a woman, you, frequently women will cause scenes. And you don't want that. <laughs> women that cause a scene? Because, cause, I don't know, maybe I was just raised different. But I know if I'm in, it's like I won't take a phone number. I understand normally, that, but wait, but if, I'm let me tell you something, sweetheart. If a woman bought me dinner and then I stood up and I said, you know what? This just isn't working for me. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go. Women will cause a scene in most cases. Well, that's pretty sad. So the way to do it is just to have your, your black, your blackberry phone. Maybe a trio does it too. I don't know, but you, you set the alarm to go off in 15 minutes and you set it with a ringtone and the thing will sound like it's ringing like a phone. Hmm. And then I just get on there and go, what? I can't believe I'll be right over. And then you leave her just hanging? Leave there. her you hanging. Know, That's right. What happened? Oh, yeah. It's great. That's how you get rid of somebody if it just isn't work. happening. <laughs> it works like a charm. And I'm waiting for reports from the front. I want my boys to try this. Next time you're in a jam and you need to get out, she's just going blah, 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 and you can't take it anymore. You just subtly, while she's blabbing on, you look like you're doing a text message or something, adjust your alarm for 15 minutes from now with the sound of a ringtone, and then tell her you have to leave immediately. It's very important. And it works like a charm. And I, And by the way, I have used it. Have you, like, ever, I mean, something major must have happened because you said you've been married four times. Yes. And I listen to your show, really, and, and, and I get really pissed off at you, but I still listen to you. And my dude, he faithfully listens to you. In fact, we listen to you together. Because you, know? you because and, as much as I piss you off, you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you just don't like the truth. Well, I don't know. We're still together, and we've been together for quite some time now. We have great sex. You know, we do things together, we eat together, and um, and plus we're supposed to be getting married. Sometimes I don't like listening to what you have to say because I don't agree with everything you have to say. Yeah, well, what's in it for him to get married? I'll bet as a listener he probably is thinking the same thing. By the way, all the boys here are readjusting their alarms right now. You are too funny. They were all adjusting the alarms. The alarm becomes a, a ringtone. Wow. And then you can get out of any situation. You should speak to my boyfriend. Uh, I'd be happy to speak to your boyfriend. I'll be happy. Oh, you got to put him on right now. Here we go. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? How Not you much. Doing? I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing all right. We're going out to get something to eat right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm readjusting my uh, I'm readjusting my alarm right now, along with the boys here. All right. Just getting it together. Well, I, I just um, basically want to tell you I've been a fan for a while. Been listening to the show and I like it. Uh huh. And, and I I continue on um, listening to to you because uh, a lot of stuff you do say makes sense. I have to I have to um, admit it. So basically that's it. Uh, can you take me out with a with a bong? I'll take you out with a bong. Here you go. I gotta get ready. It's the weekend here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Now my alarm will sound like a phone. Beautiful. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. So imagine your alarm goes off and she thinks it's a phone. 
perfect. Oh my. <laughs> there we go. So you see that's all you have to do. I'm not now boys, I'm not making this up. This is what I do. Oh yeah. So instead of having an alarm, because they have all these these different sounds on there that are like alarm sounding, like an alarm clock or whatever, but but it gives you the option of using a ringtone. So you set your alarm for 15 minutes or 10 minutes or five minutes from now. Five minutes might be too obvious. You set it for 15 minutes from now. Lay the phone on the table. As soon as the phone quote unquote rings, you answer it, and then you're out. You're out the door. You're done. This is the kind of valuable information you get from Like Us 101. Tom Like Us. Like Us. 1 800 5800 Tom. Like Us. 1 800 5800 866. Guys don't need to be in relationships. They don't. Some guys do. Some guys do. Yeah. Blind guys. You know, I imagine Stevie Wonder needs someone to dress him every day. I understand. It's the Tom Like Us Show. 5808. Six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. All right. Your call's here. one 800 800 tom for your professor. It's Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Michael. How are you doing today, buddy? Doing okay. That's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. First, I have to uh, thank you for saving my life man i'm telling you how did i do that well so check this out i get with this chick who um who you know she's a cute broad and she you know she she's cute and um you know so I, i'm thinking long term with her you know long term relationship and then she turns out to be pregnant her ex boyfriend leaves her a parting gift <laughs> <laughs> so so i'm like you know what the you know what, what's going on here you know um, so then, you know, I, I, you know, me and my young thinking that I'm 22 now, I was 20 then when all this was going on. So basically I thought I could hang around and, and stay and, and, uh, start this family with this chick. And so, you know, things start to go south, you know, I, but I, I don't, I never commit to her. I never commit to her and she wants the commitment, but I can't do it, but I still like this chick. So uh, what were you going to say? I didn't say anything. I'm listening to you. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, so yeah. So basically, you know, she she you know she wants the marriage and all this other stuff, and you know I can't promise that. You know, I'm an actor. I'm a struggling actor at that. So, um, why would you, you know, want to do that if if you had a million dollars? Why would you want to do that? You know, I I have no clue. You know, I, I just you know there was something you hadn't gotten laid lately, and she looked like a nice piece of ass, and and you were ob obsessed with ejaculation. <laughs> and so, therefore, you forgot all good sense, and you were willing to do anything to get a piece of that. Well, you know, the funny thing was, yeah, you, yeah, you could be right about Of course! That. <laughs> but, you know, she wasn't she wasn't a hard chick, though. You know, she wasn't a hard chick to get in the bed. But that, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, you wanted to keep tapping that ass. Uh, and that's the right. only reason you ever considered it. Right. You're right. You're right. I've, I've heard you say it before, you know, the, the single parents or uh, single mothers out there are only good for, uh, you know, in the sack. Only good for the... Uh, the They're sack. not. You don't even want to get in the sack with them because they already got knocked up once. Ah, very true. You don't want to be in the sack with single mothers, period. Very, very true. I mean, what was she doing getting pregnant? You know, I, that that's... That mess ran through my mind a bunch of times. I have didn't run stupid. through that much. Yeah, yeah, being stupid and man, but I just got to tell you, man, I got out of that situation, and um, you know, I, it, it's the greatest thing ever. I feel completely relieved. You know, I just, I, I don't know. It seemed really screwed up at the time. I don't know what was going on in my head. You know, and my friend told me to listen to you, and I started listening to your show. Next thing you know, I don't know, I started caring about the situation less and less. And, hey, here I am, a free man living my life. Does she ever uh, hit up your phone? Does she blow up your phone? Does she send uh, you? She, she used to. She used to. But um, now, you know, I guess she's found some other sucker, you know. <laughs> so That's probably right. Yeah. 
Yeah, some other some other sucker who was willing to do that, but uh, now I got a long life ahead of me, and I had too many goals. So uh, glad I got out of there in time. Well, you and me both, pal. Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Yoni on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm how, okay. How you doing? I'm doing great. All right, all right. So check out the situation I got here, man. Take out this girl, you know, real nice, uh, real nice girl, skinny, tall. Like, uh, got the gap between my legs because, uh, you know, like my uncle says, that's the way you got to do it. Anyways, I'm, I'm taking her out to this game. My buddy, uh, he works for uh, the Staples Center, so he hooked up with some tickets. And we go out. We're having a good time, you know. Next thing you know, my buddy calls me up. He's like, yo, let's go to a party, man. Let's go to a party. I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, you know. I asked her. She said she's all cool. We're driving. She's like, yo, I got to go home, man. I'm really feeling bad, this and that. I was like, okay, whatever, you know. I'll take you home. I took her home. I give her a call, like, the next day. Nothing, dude. No answer, nothing. By the way, you had tickets? Yeah. Was it a game or a concert? What was it? It was a game. Lakers? uh, What was that? Lakers? No, they were not Lakers tickets, unfortunately. Oh, Avengers. Yes. (laughs) Okay. You know, I... I, I'd have turned around and taken her home, too. (laughs) Yeah, but... The thing is, it was so close that you could smell the girl. The, not smell the girl. Smell like the football players up on this. Uh... I, I've been to the Avengers, I know. Yeah. So anyways, later on that night, we're, we're driving back to my friend's party one night, and she uh, she flakes out saying that she feels bad, like her, I guess her friend died or something. I don't even know what. And we're taking a long time to get to the point here. What's the bottom line? Bottom line is this, man. I'm having the worst bad luck right now. I take another girl out. We're having a good drink or two. Take her back to my house. She tells me, dude, I got to see my ex-boyfriend before he leaves. And I was like, what's the deal, dude? What's the deal with all these chicks, man? I don't understand. Um, clearly, so, it's in the picking. By the way, you got to start clamping down on this stuff. And one way, it, it's a matter of attitude. Um, the minute you have a hint that uh, things are going bad, eject immediately. That's what I did, man. I told her, here's your car. Don't no, but for example, the one who wanted you to bring her home, you tell her <laughs> whether you want to go to the game or not. You tell her, well, you know what? I'm on my way to the game, so uh, I'll drop you off here at this corner. Uh, Alvarado and, and Wilshire, I'll drop you off here, and hopefully you can get a cab. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's a matter of attitude. Do you know how many yeah. chicks I have dropped off in some of the scariest parts of town? I don't know, Tom. A bunch? Yes. You're being too nice a guy. I know, man. Also, what are you doing bringing a chick back to your place? I tell you, no chicks at your place. That's a last resort. See, she was uh, coming from out of town. What do you mean out of town? Where out of town? Out of the country. So she just dropped in from another country? Yeah. So dropped when she went to see her boyfriend, country. where was he? Dude, I had to pick her up from her boyfriend's house, her ex-boyfriend's house. No, you don't ever pick people up from their ex-boyfriend's house. Dude, no. I didn't even know what I was getting myself into, honestly. How did you know? Wait, when did you find out it was the ex-boyfriend's house? As soon as I got there. No, no. You, you don't pick. The, you, you tell her, uh, 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 something wrong here. Out. Eject. Seriously. Yes. You knew there was something wrong with that. And I lost 20 bucks. How'd you lose 20 bucks? I bought a couple of drinks, man. I understand. Where did, where did you buy it? Where did you buy your drinks? Well, we went to a bar before my house. Why'd you do that? Why did we do that? Because it was right down the street. Yeah, but you, once you home. knew that she came from the ex-boyfriend's house, you, you, you say no, absolutely not. Yeah. Totally right on that, man. Totally right. I mean, you're not having bad luck. You're making bad decisions, and you're living with the results of bad decisions. 
By the way, if she was at the ex-boyfriend's house, she just got boned. Oh, no. Oh, no. And she probably went back to get boned again. Probably so. Or she felt guilty about being with you. Or he's not an ex-boyfriend. She's there with him going, I have a friend who's coming over to pick me up. Can't a girl have friends? It's just my friend. I got to be more of a man. Yes. I got to take advantage of these people. Or cut them loose. Yes. No driving them home. No consideration, nothing. When that girl's at your apartment, were you a pussy? Did you drive her back to the ex-boyfriend's place? No, dude. I drove her back to her car. Why'd you do that? Because I'm a pussy. Because you're a pussy. How far away was her car? Like a 10-minute drive. <laughs> she can call a cab for that. I know. Yeah. If somebody, if if some chick was at my place and she told me she had to go to her ex-boyfriend's place, I would leave. And she would probably leave with me. And when we got out the door, I would not let her in my car. I would go, okay, well, you go be with your ex-boyfriend. I'm out of here. She's got a cell phone. Let her call a cab. Honestly. This is not your problem. What are you, a chauffeur? No, I'm not. You see, the reason this keeps happening to you is because you're you're making it happen. Do you understand? I totally understand now. So don't be doing that. All right, Tom. Okay. I think I had enough. All right, you. Take me out old school style. I'll take you out old school. Students, do you hear what he did wrong here? One thing after another, that's what he did wrong here. Bringing the chick to his house. Picking up a chick at some guy's place and finding out it's the ex-boyfriend and then going out and buying her drinks anyway. Bad stuff is not happening to him by bad luck. Bad stuff is happening because of bad decisions. Amanda, on Lycus 101, hello. Amanda? Yes? Are you busy? No, I'm not. When would you like to begin talking? Would you like to make an appointment? No, no, okay. I was just uh, I was just calling to say that I turned on the radio to hear the woman talking to you saying that she agreed with you that I could, because I didn't hear you talking about it. She agreed with you that men didn't have to spend uh, money on you or take you on a date to be able to get, have sex with you. And I just wanted to totally agree with that because I'm a long-time listener, a first-time caller I've wanted to call before. And I have had two boyfriends. I'm 18, but it's only two. But I knew that in the first five minutes if I wanted to have sex with either one of them. And I can honestly say I didn't go on a date with either of them, like a real date. For at least of dating them for a year, like, because it, it's not it's not about spending the money on the girl. It's about if they like you at all, you know. Wait, you made them wait a year? No, no, no. I no, I didn't go. I didn't go. We we didn't have to go on a date to have sex. Is that I had sex with them before? We didn't have a date at ah. all, so I didn't need a date to have sex with them. Now, now, uh, let me ask you a question. How tall are you? I'm five seven. How much do you weigh? I weigh one eighty five. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. What? She's a piggy piggy. That's why you have sex with a guy, bam, like just like that. No, I did. Because you got nothing oh, to bargain with. Oh, what? Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I was. Uh, I wanted to hear what you had to say. I said it already. Oh, well, well, I don't know. I I, I liked him, so I just was agreeing that you don't have to, you know, spend money because. That's right. Yeah. If your bang chicks weigh 185 pounds. Six chairs, no waiting. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Visit our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. The Tom Likas Show.